Are you excited by the new Casio A100s that are harking back to the Casio first plastic digital watch from the late 70s and featured in the modified form in Alien? Well, if you want to be really cool, then how about this old school rebrand of the same watch by Pratina from back in the day in Germany? Let's get a bit niche and delve into German digital watches. You're likely familiar with some of the well-known German mechanical watches with the Bauhaus-inspired Junghans Max Bills and Nomos, as well as Stover and Flieger military-style watches, and Zinn, and even high-end Arlong and Zornas. But I'm less sure, if you're like me, that you know the digital watches of Germany. Unlike Britain, where the contribution was very light, let's be honest, in Germany there was a mean of a contribution to the field that was led more by US, Switzerland and Japan and of course later China as profit margins got crunched. The 70s and 80s was also a period when Germany was still separated into West Germany and the German Democratic Republic, GDR or East Germany, with both having different industries due to a block on providing technologies from the West. The precursor to electronic watches, the electric watch, was an area where Germany had already had a presence with companies like Befora, Junghans, Kienzel, Stover, and probably most important with Larco Doro, who actually developed one of the earliest electric calibers with the Electromat in the 50s, before Timex acquired them and deferred the program until later, actually after Hamilton had released their Richard R. Beeb designed Ventura model. Some electric Timex models did actually use this module, as you can see, this one was stamped as West Germany at the bottom. However, the start of electronic LCD watches, which is what I'm primarily focusing on, was with a collaboration between a group of German watch companies and the Optel Corporation, which was an offshoot of RCA Labs in the US, which was the first to deploy the so-called dynamic scattering LCD, which was the mode of LCD that would ultimately lose out to the more successful twisted pneumatic LCD display that originated in the labs of Roche before they closed that division to focus more on pharmaceuticals alone. I go into this story in detail in my video on the history of the digital watch. Arctos and Previta collaborated with Optel on the design of a watch that used this technology that would be called the Diatronic, but this was very unsuccessful due to a lot of component failures that would cause a lot of damage in terms of the cost or repairs to the companies involved. Optel itself would actually later go bust in 1978. I was unclear whether this was a separate work stream, but as I understand, a whole group of German companies clubbed together, which was Adora, Otero or Epo, Exquisite, Ormo, Para, Stover, Larco and Arctos, that used the Optel LCD display to make the so-called Palace Quartz. Now, Arctos would develop its own digital quartz with an LCD display where the prototype used this Optel caliber, but would later go on to develop the LCQ575 in 1974, with the first batch being an LCD display from the Vienna-based Electrovac, and later LCDs using Siemens, which was German, and Videlec, which was Dutch, with the integrated circuit using Eurosil, which was also German. Now, Junghans, who I guess a lot of you would know from the Max Beals connection on all of the Bauhaus stuff, also played a role in innovation in the digital watch field. In the 70s, they had some basic models like the ones that we'll see on screen, but we'll come back later to some ones which are a bit more interesting from them. There were other more mainstream brands like Kienzel, Lange, Anker or Meister Anker, which used an LED module, I believe, that was from Timelec, Dugena, which was one of the biggest users of the Timelec modules, Stempo Munchen, a brand that seems to have had a whole load of digital watches, despite not actually having any reference in my favourite book on this, The Electrification of the Wristwatch, which I definitely recommend. Uh, and then MBO, who did both LED watches and LCD watches, and you can see loads of these on eBay. From this 1980 account of MBO, you can see that they're looking to compete with the cheaper watches of Japan, and you can see the market is getting more commoditized with this catalog showing some of these brands in a way that's very similar to how we saw them in the Argos catalogs from the 70s and 80s. 
Now, Germany did have some of its own first too. For example, computer time products from what was then West Germany developed the world's first dual time zone digital watch in 1976. Kristallonic from Otterbrunn near Munich launched the first solar powered quartz LCD watch in 1975 with the solar quartz, which would later be followed up by a version that included temperature, with some fun advertising as you can see on the screen around anti-pollution and space age design. From a design perspective, Braun, who brought industrial design principles and Bauhaus ideas to the consumer products realm, developed their first two digital watches with the DW20 and the DW30 in 77 and 1978, respectively. As I mentioned at start, East Germany, or the GDR as it was officially known, was still separated from West Germany around this time via the Berlin Wall, with blocks on receipt of technologies from brands that we take for granted, like Casio, Seiko and the like. The company that was the biggest provider of digital watches in the GDR was Ruler. Now there is an absolute treasure trove of information on Ruler on the website that you can see on screen, which if you're interested in the topic is about as comprehensive a source as I've seen on any brand. Now Ruler is a region of Germany and the company that would evolve into Ruler watches after World War II was based upon the Gebruder Thiel of the Thiel brothers that started their business in 1862, whose work included pocket watch cases after their initial work on pipes, with them later producing their own pocket watches, the Teal Fearless, which they made from 1892 onwards. They continued through to watches and in the lead up to World War II, as you can see on the screen with these adverts. And after World War II, when Germany was divided up amongst UK, France, Britain and the Soviets, what would become the GDR or East Germany being linked to the Soviets was actually where the company was based and the Soviets handed the company back over to East Germany in 1952. And this would become the VEB Uhren and Machine Fabric Ruler, an enterprise owned by the people. After 1967, the branding on the watches was simplified to just Ruler after the initial UMF branding. One claim to fame for Ruler was that it developed an electromechanical stopwatch it was used during the first space mission of Sigmund Jan, which was part of the space race primarily between Russia and the US. In the 70s, Ruler had some mechanical digital watches, the Digi 73s, like the ones that you can see, but they really invested in getting an LCD watch going, and in 1978, they joined forces with the microelectronics group in the region, VEB Combinat Microelectronique or the Combine. This Combine would produce all sorts of digital watches into the 80s, like those that you've been able to see on screen. One of these was worn by Eric Hot Honecker, the leader of the GDR, who when he was exiled, I believe shortly before the fall of the German Wall, wore one of these ruler watches that you can see on screen. The second largest producer of watches in the GDR was Glasuta, a Saxony-based watch manufacturer whose history goes back to 1845. Now, following World War II, the group of watchmaking companies in the Glasuta region were merged into one group in 1951, the VEB Glasuta Uhren Betrieber, the People's Company Glasuta Watch Companies, or VEB GUB for short, with GUB providing watches for the GDR until 1990. They only made this one purely digital caliber 33, as well as some Anadigi models like the one that you can see on screen. Outside of the contribution of Crystallonic to German World First, with their contribution to Solar Quartz, there were also other innovations in Germany to the digital watch sphere. One of the coolest of these is Junghans, who developed the world's first radio controlled clocks with the RC1 and the RC2 in 1985, which would carry over into the world's first radio-controlled wristwatch, and a digital one no less, which was the Mega One in 1989. An antennae in the strap, which obtains a long-wave radio signal, 
that's broadcast every day from the German National Atomic Clock, beginning a process to correct the watch time, should the time have slipped. The atomic clock that is the basis for this was the CS4 cesium atomic clock at the PTB, which instructs the radio towers at Mainflingen to broadcast out on a particular radio frequency, which is then picked up by the watch, which adjusts the time. Of course, there's much more to the operation of atomic clocks than this, but you can read on this elsewhere, and it's a topic that I may come back to at a later date. This model would be followed by a solar version of this, the Mega Solar, in 1993, which I've squeaked through as a digital watch here, but as you'll see, the digital bit is pretty small. In modern German digital watches, the two I wanted to call out were Braun, although Braun produces most of its watches in China after selling up to a holdings company there in 2009. It does make some reissues through this Chinese holding company of the DW20 and DW30 models that we talked about before, but they do make a very cool looking made in Germany prestige digital watch, which comes in a few forms as of 2013. They do also make some more less inspiring China-made uh, square watches too. The other cool brand that is more recent is Ale Watches with the El Capitan, which I think has takes quite a bit of inspiration from Braun and has been on the market in, since 2016 in various different forms. And that is the end of today's video, an area of watchdom that is a bit random, but for others may enjoy it like I did. I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, please do consider liking and subscribing. Take a look at some of my other videos on similar watch history topics, and you can follow me over on Instagram at watchreactions. I hope you have a great rest of your day.